and welcome back to some more Enshrouded. Right, now, right now, we're on a quest of finding weird weapons. So that's probably what we're gonna do for the remainder of the day. I mean, I haven't got anything extraordinary yet. Just a Shepherd's Lightning, a Shield of Light, but we'll see. Just gonna test out to see if the regular silver chests has anything special in them at level 25. I guess we'll see. So a little bit of log in and out action. Last time I looked in, and a uh, spine splinter. Now I'm not sure if I should loot any other chests around here. I know there's some, probably more silver chests too, but I think it's uh, just as fast to just loot the regular way. Hmm, we do get quite a bit of bombs too. Hmm, uh, maybe. Now bombs are very good to just, you know, stack up on. So, oh, hang on, I'm down here. Oh, there's a chest down here too. Uh, maybe? I mean, maybe, maybe? Okay, well, might do a double chest like that. Okay, log in and out. Or log out and in. Yes, quite. Okay, what about this time? Right, rusty sword in uncommon. Now that is poison damage. Hmm, interesting. Now, I would like that. Uh, hang on. Hey, okay, excuse me. Can I dismantle this? Oh, I can. Okay, so wasn't worse than that. And yeah, bombs. Okay, uh, anything else interesting of value here? No. Now, I haven't seen any of these weapons in Legendary. So if they exist or not, that is the question. Now, in the last episode, I did also say that I was probably gonna spend this entire episode just looting and maybe talk about my cat. So I might as well talk a little bit about my cat while I'm looting. Right. Buckle up. He's a Norwegian forest cat mixed in with something. We are not sure what. We have his birth certificate. I don't even have my own, but I have my cat's birth certificate, so that's something. Yeah, we're not sure what m mix is. Now, I do believe, don't quote me on this, but I do believe he's three years old. And we did adopt him when he was... I think he was over a year old, probably, maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Now, he wasn't a rescue, we adopted him from another family, uh, that's some legendary armor. Now, it was a loving family and he had it great over there, the only problem was that he lived with another cat. Now, that cat was twice his size and very dominant, so Max didn't really thrive in that environment, so we took him in, and since then... He has run the house like he owns the place, mostly because he does. Now I did get a funny comment from Dirty Bird uh, stating that cats are not pets, we do not own him, we are his servants, his maids, and I 100% agree because our cat is definitely the master of the house. Yes, we give him food, we clean his toilet, we do all the cuddles and he goes and comes as he pleases. Now, one thing about my cat is that he is severely spoiled. Shadowbane, huh? Okay, sure. Not in the sense that we overfeed him, but he always has dry food available, and whenever he asks for it, he gets wet food, as well as cat candy. Of course, the healthy kind that he can eat uh, as much as he wants to without getting sick or, you know, overweight. Now, the only issue with uh, the cat food and the cat candy, if I did what you say, is that we did a tiny little bit of a mistake of only getting the expensive kind. Now he has gotten taste for it. But the cat deserves it. That also is the great thing about a cat. It doesn't really harm them if you do spoil them and give them the best food and best candy and toys and stuff. They won't grow up being entitled because they are born entitled. Now, when me and my wife adopted Max, he was an indoor cat. He had never been outside before. Again, the home that he was in was very close to a road, so it was a reason for that and, you know, close to, close to a city. Since we live uh, basically uh, in the middle of nowhere, close to a forest, we trained him to go outside. Which is why I installed the cat door, so that we didn't have to open the door for him every time. Because that was getting really annoying. But I mean, we did install the cat doorbell, so that at least we would know when he was standing in front of the door, so that we could let him in. And, uh, but since he did, want to come in and out at every hour of the night, then we install the cat door. So now he can come and go as he pleases. 
And he does, except that whenever he comes in in the middle of the night, he starts screaming out that he wants wet food and candy. Because when we were training him to, you know, be outdoors, he got addicted to the feeling of being outdoors, as many cats do. And in order to get him to come inside, we gave him candy when he came inside on his own. And now he's addicted to the cat candy. Hatchet, you see? Okay. But I mean, he's a healthy cat. He... He's chipped and he's happy and he's uh, his ideal weight and he, I think he has stopped eating stuff outside. Maybe, at least he stopped bringing, bringing it inside. Now my cat has brought in birds, mice, snails, I think even at one point he brought in a snake. But, uh, no, he, he stopped doing that once I started throwing them out again. Now the worst part is obviously when what he brought in wasn't dead, especially the birds. You know, they flew around all over the house, and it's uh, not that easy to catch a bird that is injured. <sighs> and it's even harder to make them fly out on their own. No, I managed to do that every time. And of course, I checked them to see if they were, you know, being able to survive. So, yes, I've saved a lot of birds. Not, no, not the mice and um, small rodents, because they were usually dead. So a multitude of times my wife would wake up uh, and uh, come into the living room and witnessing a battlefield of feathers and blood and everything. <sighs> it was something. Now he has yet to bring any living creatures through the cat door, which we thought would be the main problem of installing a cat door, so at least that's good. But he did figure out a way to, before we installed the cat door, to sneak in his prey. What he usually did, that once he stood outside of the door, his head towards the cat doorbell, because of, you know, sensors and stuff, he kept his head down, hiding his prey. And once we opened up the door, he just ran in and started playing with his prey, if it was alive. Also, if, if it was dead. Now, if it was dead, we would just, you know, like, praise him. Because you need to praise the cat when you kill something. They're basically a wild animal. Oh, that's a full inventory. Well, we're gonna look over what we've got. Yeah, you need to praise them even though what they're doing is cruel and evil. Especially the playing with the uh, prey that is not dead yet. Oh, boy. But he's a cat. Wild animal. <sighs> Carnivore. And they do enjoy torturing their well, at least playing with it. Okay, let's have a look see. What have you gotten? Now, this rusty sword, I kind of want that in legendary. That would be something. Okay, let's have a look see. This is the hatchet. Oh, no, that looks nice. I would like that in legendary. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, well, that's a cool looking wand. Yes, I would very much like that in legendary 2. Shocking ice wand. I do believe I've gotten that in epic at some point. This or no, that's a proper looking sword, stone sword, yeah, maybe. And what about rusty sword? Ah, uh, I mean, it's rusty, but maybe, maybe, just maybe. Wolf Maw, and yeah, that's a good looking sword. And yeah, I do believe I've gotten this one in legendary. We'll see, but right now, I salvage all of it just for the sake of science. I'm not sure if you could get it in legendary, but we, and that's what we're here to figure out. Okay, what do we have around here? Fang blade? Yeah, I do believe that I've seen that in higher level. Uh, let's see. Now, the main reason why that other family wanted to adopt him away was because they noticed that he wasn't really thriving living with another cat. Like, he didn't want to use uh, the litter box, so yeah, it was kind of necessary. But it only took a couple of weeks and then we trained him to be outside he has a litter box that's always clean he hardly ever uses it anymore except for in the winter it's kind of funny in the winter we have very cold winters where i'm from he comes inside use the litter box and then he goes outside again because he does love being outside he's outside right now i believe and he could be outside for maybe a day or two and then he comes in eats sleeps and repeat one thing that I will say about my cat, the only negative thing, negative thing that I will say is that he's a pussy. He's a pussy pussy cat. He is definitely afraid of everything, which could be good. Now, I've grown up with cats in the household since I was very young. We've always had cats. 
Uh, the first cat was became like almost 20 years old and he just disappeared one day because cats do that when they die they just go out in the woods and then they they're gone but the second cat we had was one that i helped raise now that cat was something now i did make a video and i posted it on youtube this was probably back in 2009 i believe that was dedicated to that cat now i need to find that video maybe i have it i don't remember what the name of the YouTube channel was. I have the video somewhere, but yeah, it was an homage to my cat. Because sadly, uh, my second cat died at eight years old from brain cancer. Now we went to the veterinarian, did everything we could, paid a bunch load of money in order to, you know, fix the damages, but it was, um, no, not possible. So we had to sadly put her down, but at least she was in a better place and not paid. Right, but back to the point of my current cat being a pussy. Pushy pushy cat. Because the cat that I raised, my first cat that I actually helped raise, now she was a demon. She would attack dogs and I, she would beat them. She, she would maul them to bits. Now I'm not saying that I'm proud of that. I love all animals equally. But I did sense some kind of pride of being able to raise a cat that was tough. Extremely tough. And the same thing happened with the cat that I got after uh, after the first cat that I raised. I trained him to be quite a bit of a badass. You know, he was the king, king of where I lived. His territory spread out through the entire neighborhood. No cats, no dogs would go anywhere near our place without getting a smack in the face. Now my current cat is deathly afraid of pretty much ev everything, which is good because then he doesn't approach danger. But there was one time when he was approached by a female cat and I'm quite sure that the female cat was in heat because she was, you know, bending over, laying on her back, trying to flirt with him and he had no idea what she was doing. Now, my current cat is uh, sterilized, not by my decision, even though it's there's an argument to be made and that sterilized cats live a happier and healthier life, but since I do also own testicles, I am kind of against the practice. But again, it wasn't my decision, so that may be one of the reasons why I didn't know what to do with said female cat. Yeah, I'm probably gonna title this video Enshrouded in Kittens, because there's been a lot of cat talk. Oh, hang on, what was that? Minor Arcana? I've seen this before, it's very white. Okay, I'm gonna have a look. That is probably not Excalibur. It might be close. Now, I do believe that I've never seen rather a ma uh, minor or major arcana in Legendary, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I do prefer cats over dogs, and the main reason for that is that they're extremely independent. And now, since we do have a child, my cat gets a little bit neglected, at least when it comes to cuddles. Now, he sleeps with us in the same bed every night, so he gets his cuddles in, but, you know, it's only, only at night, basically. Rest of the day, our daughter is the priority. Now, of course, he gets all the food, all the candy, and he, if he's close to us, we do give him the scratches and everything that he needs. Now, there is one problem that I would like to bitch about, since we are looting and just basically doing not that much, so I'm trying to make content out of my personal life rather than just in Shrouded, since this isn't necessarily too entertaining. But the problem that we're facing right now with the cat is ticks. Oh boy, did I wish that ticks could be eradicated. Even though I've said and I've stated and I do believe that I love every animal equally. Oh, hang on, that's a fancy bow. I haven't gotten that in Legendary before. Yeah, because that will increase my damage quite a bit. It's been some time since I've gotten a wolf snarl longbow. Okay, maybe that's gonna be a new bow. Okay, what was I saying? Yes, ticks. I do love every animal equally, and I, I, of course, I don't think they should be eradicated, but it's, you know, it's quite a bit of an annoyance. The purpose of ticks are, you know, pest control and population control. But I truly wish that they didn't exist where I live now. They were not a thing until live that I was born. What? What the hell did I just say? Yes, so yeah, it'll head on. Shut no, up. Also, I'd be listening if they're under it. They were not a thing until they lived that I was born. They were not a thing of where I am originally from. Right, I need to 
<sighs> try to maybe give subtitles of what I was trying to say there earlier. I have no idea what I did. But yeah, ticks, ticks. Oh boy, do I hate ticks. Why do they have to attach to my cat? Now we do have the ointment that you're supposed to, you know, rub on the cat so the ticks don't really attach. But they do it anyways. At least with the ointment, they're far less. Like last year, it was a huge problem because every day, and I'm talking every day, he came in. Not being outside for too long, but he came in with 14 of the bastards attached to him. Every day. Oh boy, was that a hassle. Now there are vaccines and pills that you can give to the cat, but a little bit worried about the side effects. So we will see how bad it is going to be this year. But yeah, every time he comes in, we do check him for ticks. Now the problem is also, since he does share a bed with us, uh, the ticks sometimes fall loose. Now for some reason, we've had cats for a couple of years now, I'm not really sure how long, we have never gotten bitten. Which is basically a miracle. I mean, I have often woken up to some of the bastards crawling on me, but they've never attached. Which is good. I mean, ticks aren't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but some of them could carry some quite dangerous diseases. So, yeah. We do need to be a little bit careful. Now, we didn't have ticks from where I'm originally from. What we had was mosquitoes. More mosquitoes than probably anywhere else in the world. But yeah, m mosquitoes are totally different. Because, well, I didn't really used to kill mosquitoes. They just wanted my blood and that was fine. But mosquitoes die in one hit. Ticks do not. They're basically in invincible. Now, as I said, I am an animal lover and that includes all animals whenever there's a spider, a fly or anything else in my uh, homestead. I do try my best to catch it and release it outside. But when it comes to ticks, those bastards get flushed down the toilet. Sorry to say, even though they deserve to live as much as any other animal, they, they go down the toilet. Now, I still remember to this day the first time I did <laughs> kill a bug. Now, I was probably six years old, and the reason that I killed the bug was because the bug bit me. So, as a reaction, I just, you know, sure, I, I, I squished it. And I still feel bad about it to this day. Now, this is almost three decades ago. Boy, am I getting old when I can say stuff like that. Three decades. Oh, soon it's gonna be a century. Right, so I do not enjoy flushing the ticks down the toilet. However, there's a chance that they're probably surviving. Maybe it's a killer croc uh, scenario that if you go down to the sewers, you'll find gigantic mutated ticks. Uh, but yes, I do really wish that we didn't have that much ticks around this place. Now, the reason there are so many is because we do live close to a forest. Now, this is truly a nice way to get some higher level bombs than it is. Gotten quite a few already. Now, on a totally different note, as many of you already have experienced, because a lot of you are parents, it is quite difficult to watch television, series, or movies, at least to completion. Ooh, full of the egg. Right, but me and my wife has st just started watching the Fallout series on, on uh, the Amazon Prime. Now, that is quite a good show. Now, I did play all of the Fallout games, favorite obviously being Fallout New Vegas. Not really sure why. I did enjoy the third one too. The fourth one I only got halfway through before I quit for some reason. Then again, I played all of them in sequence, so maybe I had gotten enough of the Fallout series. Right, but let's clean out the inventory and see what we've gotten. Okay, so first off we have the Silver Storm. Not, not too shabby. Now this is ice and shock damage. I would like that in Legendary 2. What do we have over here? A fang blade. Ooh, that looks fancy. That is cutting and piercing. A little bit of ice magic damage. Then we have the Major Arcana, which is cutting, piercing, and blunt. And shock damage, you say. Ooh, that's a short little thing. Now it is white. Hmm, interesting. Then we have the Maze of Defiance, I believe. Yeah, Defiance. Ooh, that's fancy. Whoosh, and whoosh, and whoosh, 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 and big hammer time. Yeah, could be fun to have this in Legendary 2. Then also the bow. Ooh, oh, hang on, that's uh Okay, it takes a little bit longer to aim, but it does have more damage. This is fire damage. Brutal, increase critical heat damage by 
20% and crit chance by 5. This is piercing shroud increase chance on leech. Oh yeah, mana leech. Hmm. Who knows? Yeah, okay, maybe I'm gonna try that one to upgrade it a little bit. Now we are getting quite a few bombs. That we are. Not bad. Okay, what was I talking about? Yeah, I was talking about the Fallout series. Now, at least when it came to the Fallout games, all of them were very good. Not that many bugs, except for the third one, where I had to use a bunch of command lines to even finish the game. Uh, because at the very end, when you, there's something about a doctor, I believe, everything just started standing still. But thankfully, in Bethesda games, even though most of them are riddled with bugs, they do offer the option to, well, basically do whatever you want in the game, just with command lines. So I moved around all the characters and I started sequences and uh, events and eventually I was able to finish the game. Now New Vegas was probably the best experience that I had. Now I will probably at some point finish uh, Fallout 4. Now I do believe that I have gotten the ending spoiled for me. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it here in case you want to play through it because apparently the follow games are Gaining a lot of attention because of the series, which is always good. There are a good bunch of games now Fallout 76 I never tried mainly because of all of the backslash that they uh, Started with like the game was basically unplayable at the start I believe but now it's got mostly positive reviews So maybe I'll give it a go in the future, but that's gonna probably be in the future future but yeah, we have only watched uh, one and a half episodes, so thus far it is decent. Yeah, at least uh, the first impression of the first episode was decent. Loads of blood and gore, that surprised me a little. And it definitely surprised my wife. Because she loved the premise of the show, but she's not too much of a fan of blood and gore. Now, talking about blood and gore... My favorite show to date is The Boys, a superhero stuff with loads of blood and violence in action. Now, my wife did watch the entire thing, all three seasons, with me, but I figured out uh, after we'd watched all of them that she did not really enjoy the show that much, mainly because of the blood and gore. So we will see what will happen in Fallout. At least for now, it's not too bad. A lot of uh, exploding bodies and such, but that's uh, just good fun. Okay, I think that this is gonna be probably the last one. And what do we have? Extinguished sword and probably some bombs, eh? Yeah, sure. Well, we didn't get uh, too much. Infernal wand, more of those. Yeah, okay, so I'm probably gonna do this a little bit more off the camera. I just wanted to see if I could get something legendary right off the bat. At least the location is here at so Shore Watch. You just destroy one wall and then you can run straight in. Now, you can probably optimize this even better because I did have one of these things, the grappling hook that you can just anchor to, and then, yeah, you could definitely do this faster. But since I did plan to, you know, just talk a little bit about cats and stuff for this episode, I figured that uh, me having to run a little bit extra wouldn't be that much of a problem. Okay, so we didn't discover anything new today, but we have gotten quite a few weapons that I have salvaged, because I do want them in Legendary. But hopefully this episode was a little bit entertaining. A lot more talking about stuff other <laughs> than just video games. But we will see how it goes. Yeah, but anyhow, I think that I'm gonna say, as always, until next time.